the phrase suicide pact. I think yeah. you've heard a story about where that originated. Well, Murray Schwartz, as I said, he was my predecessor, Howard's predecessor. He, former chief clerk before Howie came in, took that. Uh, and he told me that uh, it had been invented when Jackson was riding in the convertible with the top down. They got around to quipping about this case, I think. And uh, Lockhart made some noise about, uh, I don't know what he said, and Jackson said, that's it, suicide pact. Something like that. And yeah. all, boom, popped into his head. Uh, on that kind of an occasion. Mm -hmm. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. Oh, I do remember that. Okay. Yeah. That's the culmination of your clerkship, isn't it? Right. Right. Uh, it's a huge topic, I'm sure, but, yeah. but what... I can give you one point, because this is certainly important to the um, Jackson project. Um, one of my... Uh, few instances of contact with Jackson face to face in relation to a case. Um, Douglas issued the stay, like we heard on the news that he'd done so, uh, had a call from the chief's secretary saying the chief wants to see you right away, you know. So I got in the car obviously and went on in. She ushered me into the office and there was Jackson and the chief sitting together. Um, and uh, it was clear to me from the moment we said good morning that they were in high dudgeon, uh, angry. And I think this has been subsequently recorded in uh, scholarly accounts of all this and so on. Um, but I can vouch for the truth of that. Um, I'd been called in to, um, I forget, make some arrangements with the clerks and, uh, as I recall, um, uh, get, <laughs> why from the clerk of the court, I don't know, but uh, get a sort of a confirmation uh, that um, uh, the chief can uh, immediately confirm, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, uh, summon convene uh, the court when he says, in other words, call everybody back, uh, something like that. Um, As a matter of power? Yeah, yeah, procedure, power, what are the precedents for this? <laughs> uh, I guess the chief thought maybe uh, the clerk of the court, Wiley, uh, nice guy, uh, was more competent than I was to know about this. Probably accurately. Right. The, the pronunciation Willie is was Willie the or Wiley? Name. Willie. Okay. Willie, yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I was wandering all around, but after the court had been uh, convened or asked to be convened, um, Frankfurter uh, snappily said to, uh, I, I have this on the authority of Alex Bickle, that Frankfurter called the, the chief and said, on, on what authority are you doing this, calling us all back? And uh, according to uh, Alex Bickle, <laughs> the chief said, because Willie told me I could. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the clerk on the Rosenbergs in the Vincent chamber? Ah, uh, well, uh, Rosenberg's been around for a long time. Uh, my recollection is that Newt uh, did the first uh, Rosenberg memo. Um, Frankfurter, I mean, the whole thing is such a bizarre history. Uh, Frankfurter constantly wanted the court to hear that simply because of death case, and he thought that federal death cases, the court should, should hear them, unless it was completely frivolous. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, we, we do this, and then uh, that will sort of... Uh, uh, give the sentence of legitimacy. I think, I think he thought that was implicit. Um, and the bizarre thing is uh, that uh, in the um, in the 
final Rosenberg decision in relation to Douglas's stay, uh, Ryan Cooter votes no. We can't hear this case. Too late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they'd switched stream because Douglas uh, was had been, uh, you know, deny these cert petitions. Right. Uh, I'd have to go back right. again to trace right. this. Jackson is with. Frankfurter in that. Uh, yeah, every, it's like, uh, as to quote Jackson, it's like switching partners at a quadrille or something. It's like the Rosenberg thing, uh, that kind of came to my memory at some point along in, in this episode. Uh, I had for, really forgotten that. And along with it came, uh, you know, that day they vacated the stay, uh, and that was it. The whole thing left them very bitter taste in my mouth. Uh, it wasn't so much, you know, about the merits of this, it was the way it was done. And uh, uh, the, uh, it, it just didn't seem to me it brought any credit on the court to have uh, acted in this way precipitously and so on. Um, and, and announced its decision and said, we'll write our opinions later on. Uh, and that sort of stuff. Um, so I, I walked out, and for some reason I walked, I guess because I was going to meet Peggy, I walked down the, the steps, you know, the long steps going up to the temple entrance right. to the court. I found myself in the middle of a, a kind of a, a, a news session where the Rosenberg lawyers, or some of them at least, were commenting to networks, I guess, on the, this decision. And one of them just got up and he was in blind fury. This is the blackest day in the history of this court. You live to regret it forever. And he went on, you know, I was somehow just fascinated uh, mm -hmm. by uh, his spiel there. Um, and uh, just one of those things that is in your memory somewhere, it comes up. Uh, it was a sorry day. Yeah.